I've been using the Mojo Dialer for three years now. And since I've used the Mojo Dialer, I've made hundreds of thousands of dollars in the three years I've been using it. Today, I'm gonna show you how. I'm gonna show you how I talk to the people, how I follow up with the people, what my automations and systems looks like. I'm also gonna show you something that you could never find on YouTube, which is an Excel sheet of all of the homeowners that I've ever gotten as a lead. I've kept track of how much their home sold for, how much commission that would have been worth, what date I found them, and what date they sold. And from those two dates, I've kept track of what the average length of time in days, months, and years, how long did it take for that lead to convert? I'm about to show you some insane information that no other real estate agent on YouTube or probably in your office has, let alone would show you and put up online for everyone to see. So in exchange, I would like one like button, please. It all begins with a fork in the road. On the left, you have the circle prospecting route. It's a long-term game. So you're going to be talking to a lot of people and they're not wanting to buy or sell anything for a long time. And it's up to you to follow up and nurture them, create that relationship, and then pounce when they're ready. To the right of the fork in the road is the expireds, withdrawn, and cancels. Those are homeowners that tried to sell their home, but for whatever reason, they couldn't sell. As a result, their data is made public and all of the real estate agents are calling them. It's the highest competitive leads. I think, I think it's the highest competition leads. It's the hardest lead source to go after, but if you know exactly what to say and how to say it, you could set the appointment, deliver a great listing presentation, handle all of the objections, and walk out of there with the, with the paperwork signed. That is the fastest route to a listing. Expireds are the fastest route to getting a listing. If you don't want to do that long-term game, expireds are absolutely the way to go, but it's the hardest lead source. And actually me and my group at the co-founders, we specialize in getting expired listings. So if you want to be a part of our free training called The Breakfast Club, DM me on Instagram at Mr. Aaron Yoon with the words Breakfast Club and we'll let you in. I've also made one YouTube video about our Breakfast Club. So if you want to check it out on YouTube, it's in the description. For the sake of this video, we're going to be focusing on circle prospecting. So here's my strategy for uh, circle prospecting and making six figures a year doing so. So first we need to assess what kind of price point you're going to work in. There's low, middle, high, right? I would recommend staying away from the low. It's gonna be the biggest waste of your time. Uh, for the same amount of work, you can get double, triple, quadruple the amount of commission um, just by focusing on something in the middle to high price points. So I would recommend, I, I'd recommend taking a look at what areas are the middle to high price points and focusing on that. So what you wanna do is click the neighborhood search button. I have a whole video that explains how to use the Mojo Dialer, but basically you just map out an area of where you wanna extract phone numbers from and create a list of that area. And again, I'm not gonna explain how to do this in the video. I have a whole Mojo Dialer tutorial video that I'll link in the description. Once you've created your lists, you're gonna to wanna to open up the list power dialer, and then um, call them on a triple line dialer. It takes about 10 dials to hit one contact, and you don't wanna be, you don't want, first of all, you don't wanna be hand dialing, and you don't wanna be dialing one by one. You want three lines to be dialing at a time so that you are most efficient with your time. Because if it takes about 30 seconds to dial one number, it's gonna take like three minutes to hit a contact, which is having a conversation with a homeowner about their home. So you start the power dialer, you get it going. I'm not gonna hop on, um, but I will show you the interface that I'm using right now. So this is the screen that you're gonna be looking at once uh, the power dialer is going and someone picks up the phone. I quickly hop over to Zillow. I take a look at what kind of home it is, what kind of, what the Zestimate is, kind of get a feel for the pr uh, property while I'm talking to the person. This is my circle prospecting script. Hey Kevin, this is Aaron with eXp Realty. I'm calling about your property on 123rd place. Me and my team just sold a home nearby and I'm calling to see if you had any plans on buying or selling a home in the future. So let me break that down. Hey Kevin, this is Aaron with eXp Realty. Hey name, I'm calling you specifically. If I don't address him by his name, he's gonna think that this is a random spam call that I'm and I'm calling a hundred people and I don't know who he is. I need to address him, hey Kevin, this is Aaron with eXp Realty. I need to state where I'm from and I need to immediately get to the point. And I need a little bit of investment from them to stay in this conversation. How you doing, Kevin? 
And then he'll say, good. And that small little bit of investment will make him more likely to stay in this conversation. Also, that creates a little bit of a break in the conversation, so I'm not ranting for 10 seconds, um, giving him my pitch before he even says anything. Hey, I'm calling because me and my team just saw the home nearby. Now I'm giving them the purpose of the call, and I say me and my team, which is like, if you're in a Keller Williams office, um, just look in the area and look for anyone from Ke in your Keller Williams office that has sold a home near you or, or near that lead and just just refer to that property as your team. You and your team just sold a home nearby. That's what I do. So um, me and my team just sold a home nearby. I'm calling to see if you had any plans on buying or selling a home in the future. <clears throat> They're going to say no. They'll always say no. They'll, they'll pretty much always say no. This is a default automatic response that people are just conditioned to say. So I always say that if you if you went into a, a clothing store and the sales associate says, hey, what brings you in? What do you say? Just browsing. But you went in there looking for pants. Just like how people have that natural automatic response, they're gonna have the same thing too. You brush off that no, that anticipated no that you were already gonna, ex that you were already expecting and say, okay, that's fine. Well, Kevin, if you ever did buy or sell a home in the future, when do you think that would be? And that's gonna get them to actually kind of sit there and think, um, maybe in like two years. Great, now the conversation has officially started. This is where you need to get their motivation and their problem. The motivation would be what's happening in two years? Why is he moving? Where is he moving to? And for what reason? So, oh great, two years, uh, what's happening in two years? I'm gonna to move to Florida. Okay, so now we know the location, but that's not the motivation and you need to dig further. Okay, great, what's in Florida for you? Family. I got my family there. And you could choose to ask more questions, but I'm gonna keep it pretty light. But his motivation is family. He's moving to Florida in two years due to family. Now that we have the motivation, we need the problem, which is, okay, and what would be stopping you from getting that motivation now? I'm gonna break down the problem more in just a sec, but I need to explain to you what statements of acknowledgements are. And you need to understand this because this is what separates a beginner to an advanced communicator. A statement of acknowledgement is something that you say after your prospect has given you a piece of information. And if you don't have any statements of acknowledgement, it turns into an, an, an interrogation. Here's what an interrogation would sound like. Did you have any plans on buying or selling a home in the future? No. If you ever did buy or sell a home in the future, when do you think that would be? In two years. What's happening in two years? I'm going to Florida. What's in Florida? I got family. What will be stopping you from moving now? So that was an interrogation and you have a very high chance of them hanging up on you if you're interrogating them. Here's what that conversation would sound like with statements of acknowledgement. Did you have any plans on buying or selling a home in the future? No, that's okay. Kevin, if you ever did, when do you think that would be? Maybe in two years. Okay, great. What's happening in two years? I'm gonna go to Florida. Oh, I love Florida. Uh, Miami's my favorite spot. What's, what's bringing you to Florida? I got family over there. Oh, cool, family, man, I can definitely appreciate that. Kevin, what will be stopping you from making that move now? So without getting too far into it, the statement of acknowledgement is just a something that you're contributing to the conversation that affirms what they said and affirms to them that you're understanding them. All right, now that I've explained statements of acknowledgement, let's get back into how to diagnose the problem. Because if you can fully understand the problem and you can resolve it and, cr and create and provide a solution to them, that means they can get their motivation faster. And if you can help them get to their motivation faster, that means you got yourself a new listing or a, or a sale. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this a scenario that um, you could probably solve, which is, so maybe his problem is something like, yeah, I need to do some renovations to the home um, and, and clean things up and, 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 and sell some cars from my driveway. At this point, I wanna dig further into what his problems are and what that exactly means. He's given me a few pieces of information here. He wants to renovate his home, and so instinctively, I wanna ask why. Why do, why do you wanna renovate your home and what do you need to do? He's also given me some information about how he needs to clean his home and sell the cars in his front yard. So let's address the renovations. Okay, what's, uh, what do you need to do? Uh, I need to fix this and this. Okay, why do, you need to, why do you need to fix that stuff? Well, I'd like to sell the house for as much as I can. Okay, so it sounds like this needs to make financial sense for you, right? How much do you need to sell this for? And then maybe he gives you a number. At that point, once you fully understand his problem. Okay, now it's officially the next day. 
I just realized that I guess I didn't hit record yesterday and I'm missing the second half of this video. So I'm, I'm extremely, I am so pissed. All right, let's redo this entire fucking other half of this video. Where was I? Okay, yeah, I was uh, breaking down the pro uh, how to get the how to solve the problem and close. Oh my goodness. Okay, so fuck the scenario that I just gave you. I'm gonna give you a new one, which is a scenario where I was circle prospecting a lead and I found his motivation. I was able to solve his problem. And then I went over to his house that same day. I got the listing agreement signed and then we went on the market four days later. That was my quickest circle prospecting lead I have ever gotten. And if I didn't know how to diagnose the motivation, solve the problem and close for the appointment and then get the listing agreement signed, if I didn't know how to do those things, uh, I would have had to wait like eight months. So here's what happened. He, his motivation was to go to the Philippines to retire with his family. And this is what the problem conversation sounded like. Okay, so um, Bob, it sounds like you want to retire in the Philippines with your family. What's stopping you from doing that now? Uh, I, w I wanted to wait until the summertime to do this. Okay, what's got you waiting until summer? So I, I, need, to, I need to dig at the reason why he's waiting till the summer. Well, I, I'm waiting for the market to go up. Okay, and what's important about the market going up? Well, if I can wait for the market to go up, I can sell the house for what I need to sell it for. All right, Raphael, well, at this point, if we can get your property sold for what, what you want now, it sounds like you'd be willing to move to the Philippines sooner, right? What I just did there was a pre-close. Okay, Bob, it sounds like if we can solve the problem to get you to your motivation sooner, then it sounds like that's exactly what you're looking for, right? And I ask him, right? at the end to get a yes, to tee him up for the close. So again, the pre-close was, so Bob, it sounds like if we can um, get your property sold for what you're looking for financially and get you to uh, the Philippines faster, then it sounds like that's exactly what you're looking for, right? He said, yeah. Okay, then Bob, let's, uh, before we make any decisions, let's get together and go over exactly what we can do to sell your property for how much and if it makes financial sense for you at this point, then you can make a decision from there. I got time at today at four or six. What works best for you? So that was the close. And it starts with, before we make any decisions, let's get together and go over exactly, and then you kind of solve the problem for him. And if it makes financial sense for you, then you can make a decision from there. I've got time today at four or six. What works best for you? I give him two time options on the same day. You need to set your appointments for the same day. And if you can't, it has to be the next day. And if you can't the next day, it has to be the next day after that. You don't wanna set it days out. You don't wanna set it a week out. You wanna set it as soon as possible. The longer it is, and especially if they don't know who you are or you don't have a relationship with them, the longer it takes to get to that appointment, the higher of a chance they have to forget who you are and forget that they scheduled an appointment with you in the first place. And then from there, there are a few things to reduce the flake rate. Um, there's like three things you can do that I'm gonna teach you in the rest of this video on how to reduce the flake rate, which means like, you don't want people flaking on you, you want people to show up and, uh, and have a high rate of attendance. So I'm gonna show you a few things on what we can do with that. The first thing that I do is I confirm three times with them. Okay, Bob, I'm gonna send you a calendar invite. What's a good email for you? And then I have them spell out their email for me. This is a form of commitment. I send them a calendar invite so that they get an email. Um, the second is I'm gonna shoot you a text with a confirmation. So I, I type out, hey, Bob, great talking to you. I'll see you today later at 4 p.m. Dash. Aaron Yoon, EXP Realty. I also have two automated emails and texting systems set up, uh, which I'm about to show you in a little bit, um, using my CRMs. But before we do that, I need to give you uh, what will usually happen, which is not an appointment. Again, circle prospecting is a long-term game. So what will usually happen is this. They won't be in a position where you can solve the problem now. It's usually gonna be something that's more time dependent, and it'll be something long-term. So you need to ask for their email so that you can set them up on a drip campaign and then follow up with them accordingly. So when you realize you can't solve the problem at this point, you say, all right, well, Jerry, you know, when the time comes, I'd love to get, I'd love to um, help you make that move. I'm gonna send you my information so you have it, 
That way you can reach out to me whenever you're ready. What's a good email for you, Jerry? So here I put in jerry at msn.com or whatever it is. I put it here. Now that I have the leads email, I have set it up so that my follow-up boss CRM directly integrates with my mojo. And if I click any of these, the lead will automatically enter into my CRM. So I have A, which is I follow up with them weekly. So if they're gonna be moving in the next few months, I wanna be calling and texting them weekly. If they're, if they're moving in a, in a several months out, I wanna be talking to them every other week. If they are uh, 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 like a year out, I wanna, I wanna be calling or texting them once a month. If, and, and so forth. I got D for uh, hitting them up quarterly and then bi-yearly, once, uh, once every six months. Oh, and by the way, um, on your notes, you uh, this is important, so you put them in there, motivation uh, wants to move to the Philippines to be with family and retire, uh, waiting to move in the summer so he can get a uh, certain price. Uh, willing to sell faster if he can get that price post. All right, so now the lead, uh, the notes are posted into the uh, Mojo Dialer notes for this lead. And once I click on the once I click and once I click on one of these follow up boss buttons, a few things will happen. Number one, the lead is going to be entered in the, into the appropriate group and tell me exactly when I need to follow up with him. And number two, he's instantly gonna get an introductory email from me, and then it's gonna start a drip campaign to uh, contact him uh, in the next two days. So I'm gonna show you exactly what that email looks like. So I have Constant Contact, which is a mailing system that is integrated with my follow-up boss. And anytime in follow-up boss, I get a lead that enters into my follow-up boss with an email. That lead gets also transferred into my constant contact, at which it which immediately triggers uh, an email sequence, and they'll be given this introductory email. The person that just got off the phone with me doesn't know who I am. Um, they'll probably forget they even had a talk with me, and they don't even know if I'm a real person. So to avoid that, you if they immediately get this email with a short, quick introduction from me, they'll have a higher chance of remembering who I am. After they receive this email, two days later, they will get another email, which is a market update for that month. And this is what it looks like. So I've got Snohomish and King County data uh, with clickable links um, that lead to PDFs. And I'm gonna show you why that's so important. I give them a quick, a super quick summary of the market. I don't want people reading a lot. People don't like to read. I, I wanna make it sweet and simple. I show them where the interest rates are at. I give them a little bit of mango, something, uh, something a little interesting to separate myself from the rest of the people. And this is an email that I send every month, once a month. The reason why this email is so important is because uh, I think this is the best feature about this. Number one, it, it's a great way to follow up with everyone at scale um, without having to call everyone every single month. But my favorite reason of doing this is that it tracks who clicks and interacts with what. So in my December email, it looks like four unique clicks happened. Uh, four people in my database clicked on the uh, on the PDF links. What that typically means is these people are very interested in what's going on in the market. They're kind of raising their hands saying, I have some questions or curiosity about what's happening for a reason. I can also see which link they clicked so I can see what county they're looking at. So at this point, I go find them in my CRM and give them a call. And this is what my follow-up calls sound like. Hey Bob, this is Aaron with eXp Realty. We spoke a few months ago about your move to Florida next year to be close to your family. Is that still the plan? So a lot just happened there. Number one, I established that, number one, they know who I am. We've talked before. 
I know your motivation. And then I confirmed, is that still the plan? And then they all go, yeah, it's still the plan. Okay, great. Well, Bob, what would be stopping you from doing that at this point? And then again, it's what you, it's what I explain later, which is try to solve the problem. Try to solve the problem. And then if you could solve the problem, hey, if we could solve the problem, it sounds like you'd be interested in making that move sooner, right? Okay, great. Then before we make any decisions, Bob, let's get together. Let's go over exactly what we could do to get your property for what for that price. And if this makes financial sense for you, you can make a decision from there. I've got time today at four or six, what works best for you. And then from there, I schedule a time in my Calendly. The reason why I schedule with Calendly is because it sends them three email reminders and then three text reminders before that appointment. So right now I have it scheduled, I have it set for um, email reminders 24 hours before, four hours before, and one hour before. And then um, I have text reminders four hours before the event, uh, 10 minutes before the event, and one minute before the event. Mm, you know what, I'm gonna change this. This, this was supposed to be one hour. Um, so I just stacked a bunch of things to avoid the flake rate, which is, getting their email, confirming their email, sending them that initial text, sending them that welcome hello email, and then they get three additional emails reminding them of the event, and then three additional texts to remind them of that event. So that is how I, uh, I almost have zero, f I, I have a zero, I have a near zero flake rate because I send them so much reminders of our scheduled appointment, and I schedule our appointments um, as soon as to now I, I can so that they don't really have a chance to forget that this appointment was scheduled to begin with. Okay, so now let us um, let me explain to you a little bit about my CRM. If you remember earlier, uh, I have A, B, C, D, and E. So I do have A, B, C, D, and E as groups in my follow-up boss. But if you look over here, I also have A exclamation mark, B exclamation mark, C, and so forth. The exclamation mark groups are specifically the leads that I haven't talked to in a certain span of time. So my A leads are the people that I'm supposed to be contacting once a week. I have my A exclamation mark set so that any of my A leads that I haven't called or texted in the last seven days, they will, they will populate into my A exclamation mark folder. And then as soon as I as soon as I indicate to follow up boss that I've texted them or called them, it'll remove them from the A exclamation mark folder and clean it out. My goal is to clean out these exclamation mark folders, which uh, you could you can see I haven't been doing that great of a job at. But this is a long term game. This is exactly how you do it. You follow up with everyone. You send them monthly emails. You send them as much as you can. So I've got a friend that just introduced me to Homebot which is, uh, uh, it looks like a great resource. I'll, I'll, I'll actually make a video about it later on um, when, when I start implementing it into my, into my systems. But HomeBot is a great valuable tool that you can use to follow up with people. You can also pe put people on an IDX, which I haven't implemented into my business. I'll make a video when I do. But the goal is to just stay on top of mind as much as you can so that people always rem remember you as a resource to do something to. And whenever you can have any kind of indications that people are raising their hands, thinking about or looking at real estate, um, you know who to call on and you just need to keep following up with everyone um, until they're ready to make that move. So earlier I told you I had an Excel spreadsheet of basically an autistic level of data on the uh, homeowners that have sold ever since I found them as a lead. So. Here it is. So these are purely the leads that I've ever gotten that have listed their home. So I don't know, I don't have the data on who bought, but out of everyone I've ever collected as a lead, I have kept track of who sold their home. So column A is their name. Column B is the house price. Column three is the commission based on a 3% commission because we are listing agents, and if you are a solid presenter and you can handle all objections and you can display value, you control what your commission is worth, unlike a buyer's agent. So you always get three, sometimes even three and a half percent commission. Here's the date that I found the lead, and here's the date that I sold the lead. Now, here's uh, here's some. There are some leads that I found in like 2018. 
Um, that's when I used to door knock. I, in, the, in the very beginning of my career, I, I built my business off of door knocking. So here is the day column. I also have the months and the years, and these are all independent of each other. So it's 55 days or one month, not 55 days and one month. So on the, on the days column, the shortest lead, the shortest found to sold lead I've ever had was 55 days. And actually, it was actually like, I found him that day, circle prospecting, set an appointment for that day. And in like four days, uh, the house was listed for sale. And then it took like a week or two on market, uh, 30, 45 days of closing, and, a, and, and then a total of 55 days until it closed. So Richard, uh, this guy was the fastest sale I've ever had circle prospecting. And it took, um, I, I got the listing agreement signed the same day. The second fastest was 86 days. I found this gal door knocking. 92 days, 126 days. Here is the most interesting piece of data out of all of this. If I found a lead, within 12 months of finding that lead, I had a 3.3% chance of that person listing their home. So out of all the leads that I've gotten, 20 of them sold or listed their home the following 12 months that I found that lead. And this is an estimated commission value based on what the average commission was and um, 20 transactions, that's about $500,000. Out of all those leads, I've had a 2% chance of them selling between one to two years of finding that lead, which I've had 12 of. And then two to three years after finding that lead, which is 2.3%. So this gives a little bit of certainty and confidence that if I find 100 leads, I know that 3% of them or three of them will sell within the 12 months that I find them. And again, and by the way, I wanna clarify, these aren't expired leads. Um, expired's conversion rates are much faster and they're, I didn't wanna clutter it up with my circle prospecting leads. These are my door knocking and circle prospecting leads. So um, I didn't wanna want have their conversion rates uh, messed up with the circle prospecting data. I also have a, a total lost section here. So basically, if I, if I listed all of these homes, it would have been worth uh, $1.5 million in commission. So $500,000 per year since I started using the dialer. Now, I want to say this. I only recently got solid on my follow-up. For the first two, three years of being an agent, which I've been an agent for about five years, I was terrible with follow-up. I didn't, I didn't, I lacked confidence in it. I didn't know how to close for the appointment. I didn't know how to have that correct follow-up call. I didn't have the training for it. I was never prepared for it. I just didn't know how to do it. And that all changed after I joined the co-founders and had the training on the breakfast club. So again, if you want to know exactly what to say and how to say it so that you can be a, a sharp appointment setter, Hit me up on Instagram at Mr. Aaron Yoon. It's completely free. Hop on the Breakfast Club. I want to show you how to get good at setting appointments so you're not losing out on half a million dollars a year. So out of all the leads that have listed their home, the average months before sale is 20 months or one year and three months. I also have this little calculation, which is if I want to do 14 listings, I need to, in the span of 12 months, um, gather 467 leads, which is about four leads a day. Oh man, I have not eaten today and it's uh, 9 p.m. So my brain is fried. I'm gonna end it here. If you made it to this point, you're my favorite person in the world and I wanna know exactly who you are. So if you made it to this point, in the comments down below, write, I love the Mojo Dialer. And I'll know exactly who you are and who made it to this point. Also in the comments, tell me what you want to see. I, I want some ideas because I want to start uploading on YouTube a lot more than I did. I've been totally not doing that. So I want some suggestions. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one.